Uh, friend, so I just want to talk a little bit about what, what a lot of families here are going through and what a lot of people in British Columbia are going through. Um, we know that a lot of families are worried about a lot of costs. Cost of childcare in this room particularly, I think it's something that's really relevant with all these beautiful fresh babies. Uh, the cost of childcare is something that's really tough for families. The BC pilot project that's going on now is, has helped out a lot of people, but we need far more spaces. There's a lot of gaps in the system right now. There's a lot of families that don't have access to affordable childcare. We know that healthcare in general is a big concern for a lot of families. They're worried about the cost of medication, the cost of healthcare broadly. Dental care is something that a lot of families put off because they can't afford. And if they can't put it off, it's extremely costly. And by putting it off, it makes it even more costly down the road. So cost of health care, cost of child care, and then housing. For a lot of families who, as they grow, need a little bit more space, there's really nothing out there that's affordable. In all these things, we look at what Mr. Trudeau is doing or not doing. He's talked a lot about a lot of commitments and promises, said a lot of pretty words, but he hasn't really delivered. On child care, it's been 26 years since the Liberal government has promised to do something on child care. 26 years and no action on a national child care. And again, this election, nothing to solve this problem, nothing to really commit to child care. And it's really no surprise because that's what Liberals do. They, they promise a lot and they don't deliver. And that's one of those promises that they've made and they haven't delivered on. Same with Pharmacare. They've been promising Pharmacare for 22 years. And again, they've turned their backs on families. In this recent platform, there is no commitment to universal Pharmacare for all. They're again not doing it. And what are they doing though? Well, Mr. Trudeau is very quick to give money to the wealthiest. Last fall, he gave $14 billion to the wealthiest corporations to buy corporate jets and limousines. But yeah, it's frustrating because he's not actually delivering for the housing or the dental care or the pharmacare the families need. Again and again, he would rather protect the profits of pharmaceutical companies than families that are struggling for, for pharmacare that they need. We're struggling for housing. On housing, it's another one where Mr. Trudeau said a lot of nice things. He said that it's a crisis, that he sounded like he cared, but then it turns out he's actually investing 19% less than Harper. Mr. Trudeau is investing 19% less as a part of GDP than Harper did on housing. So again, another example of saying the right things, but not really delivering on what people need. And that's the thing. Mr. Trudeau is going to scare people into settling for less. He's going to say, you've got to settle for less. You've got to be afraid of other things out there and, and scare people so that they have to say, okay, we'll just settle for this less that doesn't solve our problems, that doesn't actually make our life better. And I'm here to say to people, you do not have to settle for less. You Democrats are in it for you. We don't work for the rich. We don't work for the powerful. We're not going to give billions away to billionaires. We're going to invest in you. And that means we're going to immediately invest in housing, building half a million new affordable homes. We're going to tackle speculation and money laundering, making housing affordable, making sure people can keep that dream of finding a place alive. We're going to invest immediately into childcare with the goal of creating a universal childcare program by 2030. But we're going to invest immediately $10 billion to build half, uh, half a million new spaces across the country. This is a, a bold new investment that people can really appreciate. Uh, we also want to build a universal pharmacare plan for everyone. It's universal pharmacare. We're going to make that investment. We're not working for the pharmaceuticals. We're working for people, and we're proud of our plan. And for dental care, our plan is um, to build a dental care program that's going to cover 4.3 million Canadians immediately. Those who make less than 70000 will get coverage immediately with our plan. It's going to save a lot of money for families. Each of these programs, child care saves families thousands of dollars. Pharmacare can save families on average of $550. If you look at dental care for a family of four, it could save $1,200. These are all savings. Now, conservatives are going to try to put a little money in your pocket, but they're going to cut the services you need, and it's going to make life expensive, more expensive than before. We don't believe that's the way to go. We believe investing in people. We're in it for you. We're going to fight for you. You can count on us. So today, I've talked with the families. They've talked about their problems. The fact that they have a need of guarders. They have a need of a system of medical insurance. And they have a need of a housing abordable. And the liberals have turned their back for each challenge, for each problem in their life. The liberals have turned their back. They have worked very hard for the most rich, 
mais ça rend, ça a rendu la vie plus difficile pour Monsieur, Madame, tout le monde. Euh, on, on pense que ce n'est, ce n'est pas acceptable. Ce qu'on propose, c'est des propos pour investir dans les logements abordables, avoir une assurance médicament universelle, avoir des soins dentaires. Et, et en fait, euh, on ne travaille pas pour les plus riches, on travaille pour vous, on se bat pour vous. Merci beaucoup. And if you got any questions, I'm ready to take your questions. You ready? <laughs> thank you, thank you. Good morning. Uh, Shear, Shear says that he's going to cut 20, uh, cut 25 percent of foreign aid and use the money to help people struggling financially in Canada. What do you think of the conservative approach? The conservative approach is a distraction. The conservative approach is they continue to give billions of dollars to the wealthiest corporations. They cut taxes for the richest, and they don't invest in programs people need. We would invest in the programs people need, and we made it really clear. There's billions of dollars on the table that continue to go to the billionaires. We'd invest that instead in people. People, Canadians believe Canada should be playing a role in the world and making sure the world's a better place. And there's a lot of money we can be investing in Canadians, but that's when we stop giving billionaires billions of dollars. That's what we have to stop doing. And we've got to ask the richest in Canada to pay their fair share. That's what our focus is on. Uh, and when it comes to EI and condensing, uh Condensing EI when people on parental leave. Can you tell me what you, the party plans to do? On EI, we, we have a, a number. Condensing it over, over parental leave. Can you hear that? Sorry, condensing EI during someone's parental leave. Yes, yeah. Uh, so we know that the EI system needs uh, a, lot of, a lot of changes. Uh, to, to respond to the new reality, a lot of families and a lot of people, a lot of workers, don't have the traditional nine to five job. They work precarious and, and volatile and, and not steady hours. And so what we want to do is have a universal threshold of 360 hours. Instead of having the previous requirement, which is difficult to attain for a lot of people, yeah, what we want to do is make sure there's a universal threshold, 360 hours. People can achieve that, uh, and it'll allow for more coverage for more people. So that's a, a bold step forward that responds to the reality of a lot of workers that aren't working a traditional job with the traditional hours. That's one. Uh, we do want to create flexibility. So for families, we want to increase the replacement from 55 to 60 percent. And we also want to make sure people can have the option of having reduced hour or reduced leave, but higher amount of uh, compensation. So for the full leave, it can be as little as 33 percent, 30 percent. Of your of your salary or in terms of replacement, we want to give uh, families the opportunity to use to have a condensed period of time, but have more compensation. That's something that would allow flexibility for families who, who can't afford to live off of uh, the reduced amount. Yeah, yeah, I like that you're playing, that's good. It makes it more interesting. Uh, that, that's, yeah, yeah, that's our position. Oui, Jérôme Labbé, Radio-Canada. Oui, oui. Donc, sur les six coupures que ferait le Parti conservateur de 25 pour diminuer l'aide Euh, l'aide à, à, à l'étranger, également ce changement pour aider les pays qui en ont vraiment besoin. J'aimerais avoir vos commentaires là-dessus. Et est-ce que c'est, est-ce que c'est également l'approche que vous auriez en ce qui a trait à l'aide étrangère? Non, donc euh, c'est un, euh, c'est essayer de, de créer une distraction, de, de changer euh, la, la focus sur euh, la grande enjeu, c'est les plus riches. Donc les conservateurs vont toujours faire ça, vont toujours essayer de, de changer la direction de la conversation. On a beaucoup de monde ici au Canada qui gagne beaucoup, beaucoup d'argent. Les, les ultra-riches, ils ne payent pas le juste part. Donc, notre attention, notre focus, c'est de, de, faire, de cibler ça, de dire les plus riches au Canada, il faut qu'ils payent leur juste part. On a les perquisites fiscaux aussi, et on va s'attaquer les perquisites fiscaux. On n'a jamais entendu dire, parler, euh, les conservateurs, ils n'ont jamais parlé des perquisites fiscaux, ils n'ont jamais parlé des plus riches, des ultra-riches dans la société. Ça, c'est vraiment où on peut chercher le revenu, l'argent pour payer les programmes sociaux, les services sociaux dont on a besoin. Donc ça, c'est où on va mettre l'attention, mettre la, le focus, c'est exactement où il faut le faire parce qu'on sait... Avec ces revenus, on peut financer tous les services sociaux qu'on, qu'on parle. 
Vous quittez, euh, vous quittez la Colombie-Britannique euh, aujourd'hui pour retourner dans l'est du, du Canada, notamment pour participer au premier débat, au premier euh, vrai débat, entre guillemets, demain euh, à TVA. J'aimerais savoir comment vous entrevoyez euh, ce premier débat, notamment avec la présence de Justin Trudeau, qui n'était pas là euh, lors du euh, débat de, organisé par McLean au lendemain du déclenchement des élections. J'ai, j'ai hâte d'avoir une occasion de confronter M. Trudeau, euh, quelqu'un qui a brisé des promesses pour euh, la jeunesse qui ont besoin d'actions concrètes. Il a tourné le dos en achetant un pipeline. J'ai hâte d'avoir l'occasion de, de donner la voix pour les gens, pour la jeunesse, pour M. et Mme Tout-le-Monde, pour dire que c'était tort ce qu'il a fait et euh, qu'on peut faire mieux. On peut travailler ensemble pour euh, bâtir des programmes sociaux comme la science médicaments. Il a tourné le dos encore pour euh, la science médicaments. Euh, les gens ont besoin de logements abordables. J'ai hâte de parler de ça et comment on peut construire des nouveaux logements abordables. Donc, c'est beaucoup euh, des enjeux, beaucoup des problèmes euh, sur lesquels on peut mettre l'emphase. Et je suis tellement euh, heureux de, d'avoir la, l'occasion de faire ça. OK. Back to foreign aid. So, Canada's aid level is far below the international target of 0.7%. Mr. Scheer wants to drop that even further. I'm wondering what you would do. How would you change Canada's foreign aid? Would you increase it? And would you get it back to that 0.7% level? Yeah, I believe that that's where we should be going with, with our international aid. We should be contributing um, with uh, the standards that have been set. This is what people expect, that global partners should be contributing to help out people around the world. The Canadians expect that. I think what Mr. Shearer is doing is a distraction. There are incredibly wealthy people in Canada that are not paying their fair share. There are offshore tax havens. There are the ultra-rich who are hiding their wealth. Uh, we need to make sure that they're paying their fair share, and that's why we are putting forward real measures, concrete measures, to ask the wealthiest in our country to pay their fair share with uh, a super wealth tax on those who've got fortunes of over 20 million. We've got uh, a plan to end offshore tax havens, CEO stock option loopholes. That's where we need to met, uh, put our emphasis. The fact that Mr. Trudeau, Mr. Scheer is, I get them mixed up sometimes, Mr. Scheer is is ignoring this issue entirely is not really surprising. He, he'd rather talk about countries around the world that are struggling and cutting aid to them rather than talking about the wealthiest Canadians that are continuing to not pay their fair share here in Canada. Those at the very top, we're going to say you need to contribute a bit more to our, to our great country. So you would commit to meeting that 0.7% target from the United Nations? Uh, absolutely. Euh, juste en français, euh, la même question. Sur le, donc, euh, si je comprends bien, vous auriez l'approche inverse du Parti conservateur, the opposite approach. Oui, mais ce n'est pas euh, surprenant, je pense. <rire> on, on a euh, la, la position inverse des de conservateurs euh, euh, sur tous les dossiers. Euh, on veut augmenter le financement pour euh, les services de services de santé. On veut augmenter les services, euh, les investissements pour euh, le logement abordable. Et les conservateurs veulent couper tout ça. Ils veulent couper pas seulement les investissements dans les, dans les pays étrangers, ils veulent couper les investissements dans les familles aussi. Ils veulent couper les investissements dans les travailleurs et travailleuses. Donc, ce n'est pas surprenant qu'ils veulent couper. C'est exactement ce que les conservateurs font. Nous devons s'attaquer à la problème dans la société, les inégalités, et ça, ça prend du courage pour dire aux ultra-riches, « Vous devez payer votre juste part ». Et on est prêt de faire ça. Okay, so a follow-up on foreign aid. Um, Mr. Shear says that Canada should not be funding major um, middle-income and high-income countries. Do you think that's the same thing? Uh, I think again, Mr. Shear is is very skillfully distracting people. If we want to talk about revenue, the whole pro- point of his conversation is to talk about revenue. It is shameful that he's talking about cutting foreign aid when there are massive inequalities in our country, where there is just a couple of families that own the combined wealth of three provinces, when there is so much income and wealth inequality in our country, the fact that he's talking about cutting foreign aid is a distraction. It misses the point. He's missing the whole plot here. We've got massive inequality in our country, and we have to ask those at the very top, the ultra-rich, to pay their fair share. We've got to make sure that we're ending offshore tax havens. There's no conversation about that. I'm not surprised that Mr. Shear's not talking about that, but that should be where we talk. What are we doing to end offshore ta- tax havens? What are we doing to end the tax loopholes that mean the wealthiest in our country do not pay their fair share? That is what we need to get at. 
And that's how we can get revenue that we can invest in social programs. Hi, Mr. Singh. Last night in Calgary, um, the City Council voted to oppose Bill 21 in Quebec. Calgary's mayor has spoken out saying the federal leaders haven't spoken out enough on this issue. So what is your reaction to the fact that a growing number of municipalities are willing to go further than any of the federal leaders are on opposing this bill? So there's a court challenge right now, and that court challenge is very important, and I don't want to politically interfere with the court challenge. I don't want to in any way jeopardize the success of that court challenge. It's an important challenge. Um, and I've made it really clear, I'm going to Quebec. I'm going to be going to Quebec again. Every time I go to Quebec, guess what they ask me? What's your position on 21? And guess what I say? I'm opposed to it. I think it's hurtful. I think it's divisive. I think it sends a message that people don't belong for what they look like. And I'm going to Quebec and saying, I love the French language. I grew up learning it when I was a kid in Windsor. And I love building a better country by working together. I want to defend the environment. And I got a, a turban and beard. And I'm hoping that being in Quebec, by, by campaigning in Quebec and showing them what I look like and my values, it sends a message that, hey, maybe it's not a good idea to discriminate people based on the way they look. And that's what my presence does. So what do you think of municipalities speaking out against this bill? Do you support them in opposing it? That's great. It's great to see people across Canada uh, making it clear that they don't, they don't think this is a good way to go. En français, s'il vous plaît. Oui. Uh, donc, je pense que c'est... Uh, C'est bon que les autres municipalités euh, condamnent les actions du gouvernement du Québec parce que la loi, c'est euh, discriminatoire. Euh, est, et, et, il est quelque chose qui me rend très mal triste. Et c'est exactement pourquoi je, je suis au Québec. Je parle avec les gens. Je dis que je suis un défendeur de l'environnement. Je veux mettre en œuvre des programmes pour aider du monde, pour avoir l'assurance médicament universelle. Oui, je porte un turban. Et je peux avancer les enjeux pour aider les, les gens. Et j'espère je, que ma, ma présence au Québec montre qu'une loi qui discrimine les gens à cause de leurs signes, ce n'est pas une bonne façon de, de gérer une province, ce n'est pas une bonne façon d'avoir une société qui est inclusive. Hey, Mr. Singh, and this is your eighth uh, consecutive day in British Columbia. That amount of time is fairly unheard of for a federal leader in one region. Um, as important as British Columbia is, what's your thinking behind spending that much time here at the expense of some of your battleground ridings in Ontario and Quebec? I love this place. It's awesome to be here. <laughs> I love spending time in BC. Uh, we've had a great time on the island and a great time in the Lower Mainland. But most importantly, there's a lot of challenges that people are faced with. So we had a, an opportunity to talk about the housing crisis and how we would tackle that by building half a million new homes and how we would help families out right away with a rental subsidy. We had a chance to talk about the environment and go to climate crisis rallies and talk about how we would end fossil fuel subsidies, protect the coastline, defend against things like the Trans Mountain, which we're opposed to. And we're going to continue to campaign across Canada. We spent a lot of time in Ontario in the first part of the campaign. We're heading back east now. Uh, I'm excited about what this campaign can, can do for, for Canada. It's an opportunity to talk about a different way of doing things. Mr. Trudeau has turned his back on families. He's turned his back on pharmacare, on childcare. We're saying you don't have to do that. You don't have to settle for less. We can build a pharmacare that's universal and childcare that's universal. Are you planning to spend the same amount of time in Ontario and Quebec? Uh, I would love to spend time across Canada as much as I can. I'm looking forward to being in Ontario next. And we're going to keep on spending our time speaking with Canadians, focusing on their issues, and focusing on solutions, real solutions to their problems. And, and we've got a lot that we can offer. <laughs> Sorry. Hi, Mr. Singh. Um, so here in British Columbia, we have an NDP government that's pretty proud of having brought the LNG Canada project to uh, Kinemat, British Columbia. They say that's bringing 10,000 jobs to this province. Would a federal NDP government uh, be interested and as enthusiastic as our provincial government here is at developing liquefied natural gas industry here in British Columbia? So my focus is on um, ending our fossil fuel subsidies and investing in clean and renewable energy. And that's where I want to put my emphasis. So, Mr. Singh, you, you have been campaigning in BC so, so long. So how about your riding? What is the first and foremost thing you want to do to your riding? Uh, in Burnaby, the biggest concern that I hear at the doorsteps is housing. People are really worried about the cost of housing, and that's why we are really making it a massive priority. It's not just a major issue here in BC, in Burnaby. It's a major issue across Canada. 
but we want to invest in building half a million new affordable homes, building cooperatives and non-market housing, investing and encouraging that there's more affordable housing. We also want to help out families right away who need help right now. And that's why we're putting in place a rental subsidy that could help up to half a million families with up to $5,000 of support for families who are just on the edge and they can't afford their place and they need a little extra support. We want to be there for them. Also, you, you talk about investing. The other political parties also talk about investing. How, how can the voters differentiate that your investing is smarter? Uh, so <clears throat> it's not actually the case. The other parties don't want to invest. Mr. Scheer and the Conservatives want to cut. They're going to cut services. They're going to cut funding. They're going to make life more expensive. They're going to give a little bit of a tax cut, but then they're going to cut all the services and all the funding that families need, and it's going to cost people a lot more. It's going to be great for the richest, but it's going to be hard for everyone else. So that's what Conservatives are going to do. The Liberals are going to talk in this campaign a lot about helping families out. They're going to make a lot of promises, but they did the exact same thing in 2015, and they didn't deliver on a lot of promises. And for example, the Liberal Party has been promising pharmacare for 22 years. They've been promising childcare for 26 years. They have not delivered. They will not deliver. Because they're too interested in helping the wealthiest get ahead, and it's making everyone else's life harder. They're going to try to scare you into settling for less. And I want to let people know you do not have to settle for less. New Democrats will build more affordable housing. We'll expand our health care to include pharmacare for all. Dental coverage for those families that earn less than 70000 We're going to cover their dental care. We're going to make sure we defend the environment while we create uh, hundreds and thousands of jobs. That's our plan. That's what makes us different. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Singh, can I have you in Punjabi with today's announcement? Sure. Today, we have a lot of people who are not going to be able to do it. Apa parvara di madad vaste, apa bachya di suhut, apa child ke leke ama ona chonea, jere jere bachya jere parvara nu child ke di loda, o suhut apa leke ona chonea. Naal de naal apa farmer ke bhi leke ona chonea, jide chapa doyan de kharcha which include karna chonde. Te jere karnu saaste karn vaste, apnu kol kosh ke steps hege. Ek ta apa jere speculation, te foreign buyer tax apa leke ona chonea, te money laundering nu band karna chonea. Now, we have to make a affordable car for 5 lakhs, so that the child has a chance to get a car, so that the car can get a car. The Liberal government has been very proud of it, so even for 22 years, they have been proud of it, so that 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 they have been proud of it. Liberal government has been proud of it, but they have not done it. They have not done it, they have not done it, they have not done it, they have not done it. We will do a little bit. I will do a little bit, and I will do a little bit. We will take a little bit of our life, and we will make a little bit better. One last question in French. Maybe you can tell us about the position of the NPD in the case of the GEAN, the WEB. Is it a source of revenue? What is your strategy to better finance the culture via the GEAN? Yes, thank you. We have proposed several ways to do it. Mais il faut avoir un terrain égal. Ça veut dire que les géants de web doivent payer leur juste part. On va mettre un taxe sur les géants du web. Euh, ça inclut les Netflix, Facebook, Google. Euh, ce qu'on pense qu'ils ont, ils ont eu en fait euh, euh, une, euh, un temps libre avec les libéraux et avec euh, les conservateurs euh, sans avoir la taxation, c'est injuste. Ça crée une inégalité pour le, le journalisme local, pour uh, les médias locaux, ça crée un grand problème. Euh, aussi, il y a une échappatoire qui donne aussi un grand avantage pour les géants du web en matière de, de publication. On va arrêter cette euh, échappatoire qui existe. Euh, ce qu'on veut faire, euh, c'est clairement de créer un terrain égal et on va investir dans la culture. On va aider euh, les médias locaux et on peut faire ça avec une grande étape, ça c'est de créer un terrain égal. What's your focus of tomorrow night's uh, debate, especially in a province where you're struggling to survive? Uh, we're going to continue to make the question really clear about what this election is about. And for us, the election is about who's in it for you, who's fighting for you. And it's really clear that liberals and conservatives don't fight for Canadians. They don't work for Canadians, they work for the richest. They've continued to make decisions that helped out those at the very top 
They made benefits that continue to help enrich in those at the very top, and that's made life harder for everyone else. It's made life more difficult for everyone else. And I want folks to know I'm in it for you. I'm fighting for you. I want to make your life better. I don't work for the rich. I don't work for the wealthy. I work for you. Families that need help, I'm there for you. I'm going to put in place childcare. Unlike liberals who promised it for 26 years and haven't delivered it, I want to deliver it right away. Unlike liberals who talked about pharmacare for 22 years, I have a plan to bring it in within one year. We're going to bring that in and make life, life better for people. Unlike liberals who talk about the housing crisis and then invest 19% less than Mr. Harper did, I'm going to invest massively in building more affordable housing and helping out those families that need help right now with a rental subsidy. That's what I want Canadians to know. Who's in it for them? New Democrats. We're about halfway through the campaign. What is it like being stuck <coughs> third in the polls and things are just are not budging? Uh, I think about what it's like for Canadians who are being told that they've got to settle for less. I'm not worried about myself. I'm worried about them. And I know that we can do a lot better. And I'm confident we can do a lot better. And I'm worried that conservatives are going to cut services that families need. And liberals are going to tell people to be afraid of that and to settle for less. And I want Canadians not to settle for less. You deserve a lot better. You deserve a lot better, and I'm going to deliver that for you. I'm in it for you. I'm going to fight for you. And I'm confident if we keep on working together, there is so much that we can offer. And, and I'm really focused on those solutions. Pharmacare for all, dental care, housing investments. How can you fight for people if you're not going to form government? That's my plan is to form government. And that's what I'm going to fight for. I mean, I don't care if the odds are against me. That's, that's, for a lot of people, that's their reality. I'm not worried about that at all. I'm worried about uh, not having a chance to make life better for people. And I'm going to fight hard for that. But I'm not worried about where I'm at. I'm worried about where, where people are at. And I want to keep on letting people know it. I am in it for you. I'm going to fight for you. I'm going to make your life better. I'm going to make sure we put commitments in place that put you at the heart of everything we do. The Liberals haven't done that. The Conservatives certainly won't do that. They both are working for the rich. I don't work for the rich. I work for you. And I'm confident people will see in me a champion for them. Yeah, OK, thank you very much. Merci. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for all the friends in the room today, too. Thank you. Thank you.